Good evening, all. Uh, our project is Clicker on Red Native Application. So before going in detail, we should know what is Clicker actually. Uh, Clicker is a student response system. That is, I mean, this is a basic idea of Mr. Patak sir. And um, in this student response system, what happens is the, the responses from the students um, will be returned to the instructor instantly, so that the teacher come to know the performance of the students very easily. This is our team, Ajita and Gagan, myself, Gagan. Lau, Prudvi, Robert, Srijata and Shweta. This is our team who guided us for to complete this project. Oh. What is Clicker? As I said, Clicker is in a student response system where the students can submit their res responses and uh, instantly the instructor gets the things and uh, he will easy, easily get the scores also. Uh, be before going to them, we can explain the history of the Clicker. Initially what happened is, before this Akash has come, uh, so, um, the clicker team in this IIT Bombay and uh, some interns designed a device. You can see in this, the, the down image, we can see. This is the size of this mic only. Uh, based on using that device, he can press the button, he can send the responses to the instructor. Uh, and the next version, you can see the topmost image. There, they have added extra features to that device like uh, digital display and keypad so that he will enter the things and he can send the response. And what happens, last time intern, they designed an app, web, we can call it as web app. Because uh, what happens is when I entered user ID or URL, it invokes a browser and it connects to a server and criteria starts. This time we are going to use a native app. Initially question arises, why native? Because uh, these are the things we can call it as. What happened is last time web app, it's totally browser dependent. Suppose the functionality may be different if you use a different browser. Instead of Chrome, you can use Firefox. It may create problems sometimes. And uh, navigation during quiz, what happened last time is, Suppose we are writing, uh, suppose I am writing a quiz, I can go back. That is a somewhat drawback of thing. And what happens is last time, this is a, when a client requests a thing, it will send a total file, including CSS, HTML, JavaScript code. But what happens is a native app, no need to send these things, be because layout already will be there in app. So no need, we need to send only JSON or XML. And what we um, analyzed for the, in the, Version 3 is the file size of the file is very, very much large. It's nearly more than 3 MB kind of thing. And the time to download is very large because of uh, file is very large. Okay. So what's the new in our version? Clicker version 4, we can call it. The interesting thing we have implemented is the REST. It's a technology we implemented to connect. And initially, we studied about the REST and implemented successfully. The beauty of the REST is it will not maintain any HTTP connection in between. So last time what happens is, when a student logs the in thing, the session is created. And it will be maintained till he logs. So this is burden on the server. Um, and the file size is bigger. So every time it will send packets, it will busy up the router or um, what you, I can call access point. So we in this version, we overcome those kind of things. And we have included extra kind of thing, random questions and options so that uh, student cannot be able to copy a thing and uh, time synchronization. We have followed that random batch algorithm that is inspired from the MTech student Mr. Parmendra. He has given an idea to batch the thing to increase the efficiency of a router and access point kind of thing. And this is a basic architecture that we are using. Simple server and uh, clients. We can see the clients are we, we are assuming as a tablets and the server is a system or the instructor machine which uses. And the intermediate between the them to connectivity is Wi-Fi. This is a flow of functionality. We will summarize the what, how the app will function in a rough manner. Okay, first is the login screen. There, student will enter the student ID and URL, and if you press on the connect, this connect button will invoke. I mean, it will switch on the Wi-Fi in the client, and we try to authenticate. It will connect to server and check for the user entry kind of thing, user ID and MAC address. What we are doing when we connect the thing, it will take a user ID as well as a MAC address too. These things will be linked and stored in the database. If the things is correct, I mean, he's authenticated to log into, I mean, switch to another page, it, it will list the courses he has registered previously. So he has to, I mean, if you want to, I mean, if you want to this app, he has to be registered before to any, any other course. So you can see on the last image, the student is registered with three courses. I mean, they were not visible. You can see in the demo also. The student will select the specific course, which has class, I mean, he's in. Uh, then home page, we can find him. Uh, suppose uh, if the instructor launches a quiz, you can quiz, he, he presses on the button, quiz. And it sends a request to quiz. Um, it sends a request server, and it downloads a quiz JSON. You can pass them. Mm. You can see in the quiz, contact the queen after the thing. So we have included two cases there. 
either student can submit manually or otherwise time load also. So if a time load thing it will directly display result with marks and the correct answers and uh, is correct, um, answered correctly or wrongly. And uh, if, if he submitted manually, he has to wait for some time to end the quiz. Synchronization. One of the important, I mean, what we consider is it's important because uh, what is our objective to include this synchronization is every student has to start the quiz at the same time and that is what our intention and uh, so to solve this we have included two times that is launch time another one is access time launch time is the time when the quiz is going to be displayed in the student's tablet the time when it's going to be displayed on the tab tablet and uh, equal that is equal to the server time when the instruction launches a quiz plus wait time the wait time is the given by this instructor so that he can assure that the student can be download the quiz. Uh, in that we have access time is the time when the client's request hits the server. And there are three cases we can say. The first case is launch time greater than access time. This is the logic we have implemented too. So I will go first. Um, launch time greater than access time. So launch time is greater than means so there are some more time to launch the quiz, to display the quiz on the team. So it will wait for that time. And if equal to thing, it will directly quiz, um, quiz will be displayed. Launch time minus access time means what? Means student come late. If the late comers are there, we will be get the less duration of time. That's what quiz time minus access launch time. Next slide. Okay. I will hand over, hand over next slides to Mr. Good evening, all. Uh, coming to the architecture we have used in our project, that is REST. REST is REST, REST, uh, REST is representational state transfer. The key points of REST is a stateless. REST is nothing, nothing but it simply follows the HTTP protocols. Simply that its clients and server are going to connect via request. So uh, main key feature is stateless. Stateless in the sense that each request is independent of the, the, of the previous request. So there is no session stored in the, on the server side. So uh, there is no uh, information required. So at each, each request, the, each uh, request we have to require total information uh, to cl cl clarify what the request is going. And the second is scalability. Since, since session is not stored in uh, server side, so so, uh, so uh, every resource is uh, server side is able to free the resource quickly. And the connection in, in REST, the connection is not persist persistent. There is no live connection between the uh, clients and server. Next, coming to the architecture, there are uh, number of tablets that are going to use, uh, going to be REST web resources. We have used Jersey as a API. Jersey is uh, reference, reference implementation of REST web services. That if any, any client request come to, come to the server, it going through the Jersey API. It has a by default servlet that dispatch the request to particular web resource pages. Web resource pages have directory structure and that consists many uh, many web resource classes and their methods. These methods may be, we have used as quiz services, poll, result, and resend. Uh, according to the URL, that request passes through the uh, uh, jersey and jersey contains the starting information where the web resource is contained. And we have uh, JAX RS. Uh, JAX RS use annotation that according to the annotation, different methods are going to be called. For if uh, suppose if, uh, there is a request for quiz, so according to that uh, URL, the quiz is going to be accessed. And we have used in quiz method, we have used representation that is representation is the what the document is going to be transferred between the clients and server. So we have used JSON. JSON is because JSON is very small in size and easily parsed. Uh, so, and at backend we have used my, MySQL database and uh, JSP uh, as a coding. So that that uh, that going to execute and uh, do the work of backend backend. And coming to the next slide, we, we're going to handle Robert. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Robert from Energy uh, and I'm going to talk about something like randomization in our project. So what we did, like, it's a very uh, I like this actually this. Uh, uh, this uh, our features random question and random options uh, so we are displaying random question and random options so that people could not be able to uh, uh, copy the things so even uh, is, is i'm sure it's not uh, i mean 
many people could be getting the same order of the question it could be possible but even if the people are getting the same order of the question they won't be giving the they won't be getting the same order of the option also so even i consider like you, if they are uh, order of questions are correct order of options are same so the possibility of seating the both person to each other is almost less so this is the one feature we added so i would i would like to talk about how i did this so this is the array uh, array the lap, uh, left side I, I can from my, my left side left side this is the array so the value of the index uh, value of value of the particular index is same uh, the value is same as the index actually so so for zero the index uh, value of that array is zero for one is one two is two so what i did i just shuffled that our value so after shuffling what i uh, what i got is like for zero i am getting three value for index one i am got i got five for two i got seven so in this way if i am going to display the question number first so it won't be uh, it will be actually actually third question not the actual first question so in this way i was able to uh, print the order uh, uh, random questions so the same logic i applied for the options also so there also i am doing the same thing for like four options are there so i uh, shuffled the arrays and displayed in the tablets so i could achieve this and it's uh, working perfectly <laughs> so next slide uh, i would like to talk about the challenges what we faced like uh, challenges uh, the first challenge we we, fa we, we faced was uh, uh, web servers and the and android application the communication between web server and and and, and the android application uh, we went through a lot of uh, uh, links and uh, some research papers but uh, finally we could uh, uh, we, we could uh, implement with the rest technology what my friend that was already told so in that way we we, we work on with the, the first challenge the second challenge was to synchronization between app and the server 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 activity the same thing why, what my friend said said like synchronization if a person comes after the quiz has been started so he should be getting the last time right so that's thing we implemented uh, third one is the keeping track of the responses so the there are so many people so many random options random questions so keeping track of the, those things were little bit difficult so somehow we did this and the third is like database schema so the database schema was to design that also it, it was also very tough job uh, so th uh, the next one is random question uh, displaying random questions and options so i like this actually because i did this uh, it was a little bit uh, interesting so somehow i did this i got some algorithm i implemented this uh, after that the last one is random batch algorithm from some amtech guy uh, amtech people uh, we got this uh, idea how to implement what is the idea so impl we implemented that idea uh, now we are successfully able to uh, overcome all these challenges the next uh, next are this uh, statistics we conducted some experiment so these are the statistics uh, most of the things we got almost uh, 100% it was not exactly 100 but almost 100% so there are two two types of apk we installed one is uh, one is throughout wifi and one is uh, automatic switching on and switching off so what happens in uh, automatic switching on and switching off whenever the communication between server and client is required then only we are going to switch on the server uh, sorry switch on the wifi automatically and uh, this was the first application and the second application was uh, uh, throughout the wifi wifi will be switched on throughout the application as long as uh, application is running so these were the two apks and uh, these are the statistics next slide okay okay after this uh, i would like to mention what we learned from the, our project uh, some project uh, what we learned is like android uh, android uh, and the rest technology and the, some jsp and some algorithm we uh, developed so that we can properly do the project and uh, apart from this uh, this much we learned from this uh, project my i would like to hand over the rest of the presentation to my friend ajita Okay, random batch algorithm. Uh, we uh, included this random batch algorithm because uh, to uh, improve scalability. Because if the router capacity is less than the number of clients, then we need to scale it up. So we included ran random batch algorithm for every uh, client to connect to the server. So any request the client sends to the server, like quiz request response or poll request response, uh, for result uh, requesting the result, every uh, request to the server. Uh, in the client side itself, we'll calculate number of batches. That is the co uh, number of students in that course divided by 25. We'll uh, maintain that uh, throughout our app on the client side. Um, that is n. And random number is generated from 1 to n the first time. The next time, n is decremented by 1 and then generated, I mean, 1 to n minus 1, random number is generated. So first time, if the random number is 1 to 4, the next time, random number will be 1 to 3 till uh, the uh, user i mean the client gets 1 if the random number is 1 the request is sent uh, i mean 
they'll switch on the Wi-Fi and obtain an IP address and the data is sent to the server. After the data is sent to the server, uh, the server will uh, send an acknowledgement to the client. If the acknowledgement is one, then we are sure that uh, our uh, request or response has reached the server. So th um, we have uh, had this uh, sending of request or response uh, to the maximum of four times till we re uh, till we have an acknowledgement. Uh, this is to ensure that our data is received at the server end. Our future works. Uh, audio video. Um, interaction which has been uh, done by the other teams is not impl uh, implemented on the native app. So that can be done and images for questions can be done because for now it is uh, only text textual questions and multi-language support can be added at the server side. Demo. The server side, uh, the instructor enters the co course ID and goes to the quiz module. Uh, connect, connect to the uh, server. On the client side, uh, uh, they will enter um, student ID and then uh, server IP because our database is like checking it with the MAC address and with the uh, student ID. MAC address is taken automatically from the uh, tablet. And after logging in, they will get a, a list of courses and if they select a course, it will be redirected to the home page which has... Uh, these modules quiz poll result and raise hand raise hand is to ask questions poll is to um, give any answer the instructor uh, asks some something like uh, we have had uh, three types of questions multi choice questions um, and then radio button questions like true or false questions or something like that and then text box questions this is this will be in a quiz json file sent from the server so that the overhead of uh, sending files will be very less our file size will be very less and manual submit so it will be redirected to this page till the uh, complete time and this is the result page what have option he has selected and all those and the wrong answer will be displayed in red for the uh, user to uh, have a clear idea and responses can be viewed on the server side how many uh, downloads of the quiz and how many uploads of the result. Okay. Previous results can be uh, uh, seen from the result module and also it can be downloaded to a PDF and poll option is like when a uh, server asks some question like do you want to have a class tomorrow or something like that then the options I mean responses can be collected from the uh, clients. The same process as we uh, implemented in the quiz the same option will be like in poll also the same process. Raise hand is like uh, like other teams said, the client can ask any doubts and it will be posted onto the uh, server database and the uh, instructor can view those doubts. So this is something which uh, is a marked improvement on our earlier efforts. Only one thing saddened me, you have not acknowledged the input of the MTech student. Nowhere in the report, the inputs that you got from the MTech student are acknowledged. We have uh, implemented two APKs, sir, like uh, throughout Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi on and off. The demo we showed now includes the random batch algorithm, which is done by MTech students, which we have acknowledged in the PPT. No, 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 but that's not fair. You have not, see, what happens is, one year later, if somebody reads this report, it would imply that when you did this project, you were not even aware of the alternative. If that is the alternative which IIT ultimately takes forward, you will get zero credit for any contribution. So write an annexure of few pages saying this is the alternate method and quote, now that he has MTech project report it itself is ready, you can quote that report. Now, what is your judgment if I want to scale it up to 500 tablets in a classroom or 250 tablets in a classroom? Actually, uh, the Wi-Fi on and off time only uh, takes much time, sir. So, if we uh, increase that time, the batch time, uh, the time the batches has to wait for the Wi-Fi on and off, if we increase that time, uh, it, it can be scalable uh, till 500 tablets also. But we should increase the ba uh, time each batch has to wait and... Uh, there is, by the way, uh, all of you are familiar with the Clicker app. I've been talking about it and we propose to use it. One of the fundamental problems of this entire quiz conducting exercise, whether it is online on desktops or clicker devices, is the, is the sadly mistaken notion of all testers that a fixed time, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, is so vital in life 
that everything else can be sacrificed. Let me tell you parallelly that is the stupidest way of testing. If somebody takes slightly longer and if somebody does it slightly faster, the difference in the knowledge of the two is zero. But during the test, the person who does things faster gets enormously extra credit. That happens in life also. I mean, you cannot, for example, I cannot say that like Einstein, I'll take about 10 hours to answer this quiz because we are not Einsteins. But the fact of life is that this penchant for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, etc. And even in the demo, the time that is given is completely inadequate for the physical users to enter all the answers proper. So I, I'm reminded of a, of a demo which uh, I remember I was in Mau, the military headquarters, and they had run a simulation of tank battle on a TDC-316 computer. And uh, one officer was showing that demonstration. It actually gave a scenario that there are some enemy tanks from this side, and you have this uh, tank unit at this place. So how would you counter attack? And there were three options, A, B, C, etc. And the person being quizzed has to think about the right option and press the right option. Uh, the uh, uh, Major General, who was actually an extremely well-known tank commander of the Indian Army, could figure out the solution even before the question was raised by seeing the... Uh, uh, and he says, of course, B. And then, he was struggling with the keyboard to find out the letter B because he had never typed in his life anything. He took several seconds and typed B. And the response was, please get yourself medically checked. The officer who wrote that simulation was promptly transferred to an unknown location. <laughs> the point I'm making is that while time is important and all of us are familiar with this, three hour final exam, two hour mid same test, one hour this, one minute quiz, etc., etc. All of you, I would like to think about it. How vital is that time versus how vital is to give every individual sufficient time as per his or her own speed of thinking. Not in, in inordinately last time, but as per speed of thinking. What would produce the better judgment of a person's understanding? Now, this is something that we are seriously working on Basically, this extends, this kind of quizzing and testing extends the established educational practice which talks about fixed time variable learning. So, when the classes are one hour long, so the 40 lectures, 30 lectures, 20 lectures, what I understand in those 20 lectures may not be the same as what Professor Avinash Aute understands. Of course, he didn't attend lectures to understand them, but that's a different story. <laughs> He understood the lectures only when his colleagues took their long notebooks two days before the exam to ask him what this means and he explained to them after reading their notebooks. But that is exceptional. The point is that if there are some differences, not extraordinary differences, some differences will exist, does the education system give equal opportunity for every individual based on every individual speed? And what I talk about lecture time fix, tutorial time fix, semester time fix, year fix, extends to testing. So, sorry for taking your time, but this is something which all of us need to be concerned about. Using MOOCs, we hope to completely change this paradigm. You, you had seen earlier an adaptive testing mechanism, where the adaptive testing will permit individuals to make up, understand something else, and then uh, sort of go ahead. In IIT, we do these kind of experiments. I don't know whether I shared this with you or not, but it's worth noting. The first year programming course, in the very first month, the students who come to IIT, they're all through JE, they're all smart people, and IIT Bombay gets the best of breed. But there are several students who have studied in their native languages are not good in understanding English. For first two weeks or so, they're completely lost because the lectures are in English. So what we find is that in the first test, many perform miserably. Some are weak in programming, but some are weak because they could not understand the lecture. So the experimental basis, I did it for three years and it proved to be successful, namely that I would give a makeup test to all those people who have scored less than 40% marks. 
Why 40%? Because 40% was announced as the passing percentage in my course. Now, when you give this retest again, and you give this after sufficient time so that people would have understood everything, the syllabus would be same as that of the first test. Very obviously, people will score better. Now, what happens if somebody scores 100 on 100? The person who got only 42 in the pre actual test, would he not lose? So the rule that I made is that you can score as much as you want, but only up to 40% will be considered as a replacement of your poor test score. But believe me, that helped people understand and learn much more. Now, this is some kind of an adaptive testing. I digress, but the objective of this entire clicker application is that rather than to wait for the first test to find out who has not understood anything, I can understand it in every lecture by conducting a quiz. So there has to be a compromise. I can't conduct a quiz for 10 minutes each to give everybody time. But it should not be another extreme which says one minute or two minutes or something like that. So pedagogically, even in the demonstration, and you should all know this because you will be demonstrating different things in life. When you demonstrate, the, if there is a user interaction, first of all, the demonstration strings that you use should be valid strings, like they had put all valid questions. You enter a string, do not enter A, B, C, D, E, F, G for demonstration. That string has to have a context, if it is a name, it should be name of person, etc. And second, estimate the time required to quietly enter whatever things are to be entered by the user by doing a pre-hand demo with people who are not familiar with that. You would have tested all of these among yourselves. Now, you know all the questions, you know the software, so it takes you probably only half the time to answer the correct question. But what you should do is you should pick up the other people. So remember this when you do a demo. For user interaction, do a demo with friends of yours who are not involved with that. Find out how long they take. Double that time, or at least multiply it by one and a half, and set that time as your demo time. Because the demo is being shown to completely different and new people. Sorry for digression, but good work. Thank you so much. And please provide that annexure. Let's give them a big hand.